हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन टू माय चैनल दिस इज़ द नाइन्थ चैप्टर फ्रॉम विच आई एम गोइंग टू अपलोड द ऑडियो इसका टाइटल है एफिडेविड्स आई होप कि आपको ये ऑडियोस किसी न किसी तरह से हेल्प कर रहे हैं आपकी प्रिपरेशन में लेट्स स्टार्ट फर्स्ट एन एफिडेविड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ एनी कॉज appeal or matter before the court may be sworn before a notary or any authority mentioned in section 139 of the code or before a registrar of the court duly authorized in this behalf by the chief justice or before an oath commissioner generally or specially authorized in that behalf by the chief justice second is every affidavit shall be headed in the supreme court of india and shall be filed with the cause appeal or matter for which it is sworn third is every affidavit shall be drawn up in the first person and shall be divided into paragraphs to be numbered consecutively and shall state the description occupation if any and the true place of abode of the de deponent every person or place referred to in an affidavit shall be fully described in such a manner so as to clearly establish the identity fourth is an affidavit shall be confined to such facts as the deponent is able for his own knowledge to prove except on interlocutory application or miscellaneous applications on which statements in this behalf may be admitted provided that the grounds thereof are stated fifth is the affidavit requiring interpretation to the deponent shall be interpreted by an interpreter nominated or approved by the court if made within the state of delhi and if made elsewhere shall be interpreted by a competent person who shall certify that he has correctly interpreted the affidavit to the deponent sixth is where the deponent is a pardanashin lady she shall affirm or take oath before a lady registrar of this court which shall include an additional registrar duly authorized by the chief justice or before a lady oath commissioner and shall also be identified by a person to whom she is known and the person shall prove the identification by a separate affidavit seventh is every exhibit annexed to an affidavit shall be marked with the title and number of the cause appeal or matter and shall be initialed and dated by the authority before whom it is sworn eighth is no affidavit having interlineation alteration or erasure shall be filed in the court unless the interlineation or alteration is initialed or unless in the case of an erasure the words or figures written on the erasure are rewritten in the margin and initialed by the authority before whom the affidavit is sworn no correction in the affidavit after filing shall be permitted except on the application supported by the affidavit of the affiant such correction shall be made in the case of first an affidavit by filing a fresh affidavit of affiant and second a document by the party or advocate providing the document ninth is an affidavit may be refused to be received by the registrar where in his opinion the interlineation alterations or erasures are so so numerous as to make it expedient that the affidavit should be rewritten tenth is where a special time has been limited for filing affidavits no affidavit filed after the time shall be used except by leave of the court eleventh is where an affidavit is filed in a pending case it shall mention the case number and the names of the first party on either side twelfth is in the verification of petitions pleadings or other proceedings statements based on the personal knowledge shall be distinguished from the statements based on information and belief in the case of statements based on the information the deponent shall disclose the source of his information including official records 13th is in the case of affidavits filed in respect of a minor or a person of unsound mind under order 7 of the rules the proposed guardian or affiant shall state that he has no interest in the matter in question in the appeal or petition adverse to that of 
the minor or that he is a fit and proper person to be so appointed the affidavit also state first that the affiant has obtained consent of the person proposed to be appointed as guardian for the case and the latter has consented to act as such b whether the minor has an appointed guardian or declared guardian and if so who that person is c if not who is the natural guardian and in the absence of a natural guardian who actually has the custody of the minor and d where any person other than one of the above is proposed as guardian for the suit the reason for not proposing the person omitted 14th is nothing in this chapter shall be deemed to limit the power of court to call for an affidavit in any case and to strike out from the affidavit any averment which is scandalous frivolous vexatious and irrelevant or which is otherwise an abuse of the process of the court at the cost of an offending party 15th is the affidavit accompanying a petition for review made upon the ground that of the discovery of new and important matter of evidence within the meaning of order 47 rule 1 of the code shall state in clear terms what such new and important matter of evidence is the effect or purport thereof and that the same after the exercise of due diligence was not within the knowledge of petitioner or could not be produced by him at the time when the order was made or judgment was delivered the documents if any relied upon shall be annexed to the petition 16th is the affidavit accompanying a main case an interlocutory application or miscellaneous application dismissed for first default of appearance or for second failure to take any step within the specified time a shall state the circumstances under which such default was made and b whether or not the party whose main case or interlocutory application or miscellaneous application was dismissed had previous to such dismissal engaged an advocate to conduct the main case or interlocutory application or miscellaneous application 17th affidavit which includes a petition or other document required to be sworn or verified and sworn includes affirmed 18th is the affidavit accompanying a curative petition shall state in clear terms that the petition is governed by the judgment of the court in case of rupa ashok khurra versus ashok khurra and another 2002 4 scc 388 so this was the end of chapter 9 i hope these audios are helping you in your preparation all the very best for your preparation and upcoming exams um, if these videos are helpful so please share it with others also and do subscribe to my channel and like the videos thank you